We have here Jeremy Hurwitz. Jeremy is the president of Investec. Now, Jeremy, I know you, you, have, you have the advantage of, of consulting with clients internationally in Europe and Australia and the US. Uh, so I'm really keen to know from, from you, what are the trends that you see emerging internationally? What are the trends you see emerging now and what do you project to last in the, the trends that, 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 will, that will emerge over the next, or uh, evolve over the next five years? Sure. Um, so I think I think we see two or three themes okay. that uh, that seem to play out. One of them is the traditional theme: firms continue to upgrade their technology, evolve to new platforms, new technology, sort of following the vendor uh, a, a horse race that goes on out there as vendors you know bring new products to market and things become technology enabled and web enabled and cloud enabled. We have that kind of what we consider chase the tech the, the new technology, okay. and that's being driven by you know both the shelf life of existing systems, mm -hmm. and it's been driven by the demand to move to software as a service, to the cloud models, to the virtualization of services. So there's been that technology wave that people drive towards. So that, that, that tends to be a consistent theme that goes on throughout. Systems get old, people replace their systems, and on they go. Um, what we see happening at the next level is the change or the shift in the sophistication of the investment management process. Mm -hmm. So firms no longer being able to kind of do what we considered a very very basic asset management. It's now becoming much more complex in the way they do modeling, in the way that they look at a universally managed account or a UMA, um, the way they think about overlays of portfolios, you know, risk models, and that's forcing firms to go beyond what we consider basic functionality and basic services that they provide. So there's this need to deploy more uh, asset classes to use derivatives effectively, and that's now forcing change of systems. So that's one of the reasons firms are upgrading their trading platforms or their risk platforms or uh, having to, to expand data footprints is because the complexity of the information they're managing and the instruments they're managing have become more sophisticated. Right. And it's all being tied from the asset allocation, selection, evaluate, you know, modeling that's being done at the top of the house. So that's forcing change through replacing old systems, putting in new systems that have more sophisticated analytics, more sophisticated risk modeling. Mm -hmm. So that's a big theme. I think the other theme we're seeing clearly is people looking to simplify their businesses, contain cost, and that's playing into the outsourcing model. Right. So if I look back three or four years, we didn't really see outsourcing as a reality. We saw it as a the theoretical approach. Right. Firms were being, you know, pitched the outsourcing model all the time. You had a couple firms that jumped into it and, you know, generally had a tremendously challenging time establishing what I would consider effective outsourcing. We've seen that change. We've seen a lot more hosting, co-hosting, varying degrees of outsourcing all the way to the full back office lift outs. And there are some very large prestigious firms on the street right now that are waiting in line to go on to the next you know, platform with the big outsource service providers, you know, all the big names we know. So those are big themes that are, you know, that sort of continue to flow through uh, the asset management space. That was very useful, Jeremy. Before I let you go, do you have any closing thoughts or uh, ideas you'd like to share? Um, you know, I think, I think uh, the challenge that we see um, for the buy side is sort of we've got, a, you know, we've got a, a wave of new technology that constantly sweeps over us, you know, whether it's big data, whether it's cloud technology, whether it's software as a service, whether it's complex BI. And part of the challenge, I think, for the buy side is we're sort of fighting this battle between just meeting basic functional needs and leveraging new technology. And you know, we're, we're at a cycle right now. Where we're spending is a little constrained. We've come out of a very tough, you know, cost-controlled cost world and having to survive, you know, very, you know, large downturn and, nine, you know, 1929-style recession. And so firms are really not aggressively spending on technology that I believe can differentiate them and offer the kinds of services if you've got a truly mobile um, you know, platform or you're offering your clients you know, interactive web services, things that really impact the client relationship. But we're really not getting a lot of investment in that zone. We're sort of playing more in the traditional zone of just blocking and tackling. And I think there are firms that are going to you know, offer breakout services that have technology leverage to them, that have advanced data capabilities to them and their clients that should be kind of the next frontier, leveraging complex you know, BI and analytics and things like that, that really are, you know, we're, we're still seeing firms struggle to commit to those kinds of new frontiers. Very good. Jeremy, thank you very much for coming in today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.